I am a human being. I have feelings, emotions. I am a human being. I am a... Hi, I'm David Feldman, and this is the mop-up for May 9th, 2023. I am a human being. Are you? The stock market closed mostly unchanged on Monday. Smith & Wesson Brands, Inc. was down 1.4%. Vista Outdoors was down 2%, and in after-hours trading, it was down an additional 1%. Sturm Ruger & Company was down nearly 1%. All three of these companies manufacture guns and assault rifles for American consumers. Now, in the past, after a mass shooting, stocks like these would rise immediately. There would be a mass shooting, And immediately, the conventional wisdom on Wall Street would be that gun lunatics are going to panic buy guns and ammunition because they figure the government is finally going to come to its senses and ban assault weapons. The panic buying of the guns and ammunition would mean an increase in business for the gun companies, which would be reflected by a rising share price on Wall Street. But over the weekend, there was yet another mass shooting, and the gun companies performed poorly on Wall Street Monday. What is the market saying? This is odd. Usually, gun stocks go up after a mass shooting. What does Wall Street see? Perhaps gun nuts are no longer panic buying after each mass shooting. Perhaps the gun nuts can finally relax in the knowledge that despite a vast majority of Americans wanting an assault weapons ban, it's not going to happen. Our government isn't going to take away their guns. They don't have to stockpile guns because the government isn't coming for them. They're not coming for the guns because our government cares more about the profitability of a handful of weapons manufacturers than it does the health and safety of our children. That could be one of the reasons the share prices of gun stocks actually went down today. They underperformed the stock market today. Apparently, the days of panic buying are over. The days of panic buying guns and ammunition after a mass shooting are over. Perhaps the other reason gun shares sunk on Monday is guns, specifically assault weapons, are no longer a growth market. The right wing in America is armed to its rotted out teeth. Maybe everyone who wants a gun has one. Maybe no matter how much further testosterone levels and sperm counts go down, No matter how much more the American penis shrinks, and seriously, the American penis is getting smaller, maybe no matter how high the rising number of impotent American men, no matter how many more American men report an increase in celibacy and loneliness, maybe the gun market is saturated. Everyone who was going to buy Cialis, penis extension surgery, pocket vaginas, mommy porn, and assault weapons, maybe they already bought it all. Maybe gun sales, just like the penises of the men who buy them, are no longer growing. See, I don't know, but maybe everybody who thinks they need a gun to feel like a man has one. Sorry, National Rifle Association, but not all American men can't get it up. I'm sorry, National Rifle Association, but not all American men are involuntarily celibate. Not all American men are incapable of expressing their anger and disappointment through words and must resort to your weapons. Not all American men are so out of shape they can't throw a punch, so they need a sidearm. Maybe everybody who needs a gun in America has one. And 
Do men who own guns realize what they're telegraphing to the world? They're saying, my penis does not work. Somebody needs to explain that to these gun nuts. You're saying, I haven't kissed a woman in decades. You're saying I'm addicted to porn. I'm weak. I can't defend myself intellectually or physically. I'm a loser. And the only thing that makes me feel like I have any power is a gun because I'm powerless. I have nothing. I have nothing. Yes, guns. Guys, incredibly sexy. It screams masculinity to me when you when you brandish your sidearm. So maybe all the men in America who hate themselves, who have no faith in their minds or bodies, maybe all these rancid, subhuman, intellectual tapeworms, Darwin's also rans, as I call them. I think of people who buy assault weapons as Darwin's also rans. Maybe they're fully stocked. Maybe that's why shares in gun companies went down today. Nobody needs any more guns. I doubt it. I doubt it. But it would be nice to think that everybody who needs a gun has one. But if you're thinking of buying a gun, if you're 16 or 17, you're watching me right now, seriously, dude, you need to rethink the idea that owning a gun makes you look masculine or tough. You're telling the world when you carry a gun, when you buy a gun, when you go to a shooting range, you're, you're telling the world, hey, everybody, look at how powerless and gullible I am. Real men don't need guns. Seriously, dude, you need to hang with real men. Real men don't need guns. And when we see you with your guns, we all know what you're overcompensating for. Well, in the wake of yet another deadly shooting over the weekend in Allen, Texas, the Lone Star State's governor, Greg Abbott, warned on Monday not to blame guns. Instead, we need to address, he said, America's mental health crisis. Governor Abbott, you go first. You address your own mental health issues first. Greg Abbott is the last person in America who should be talking about mental illness. Now, according to Newsweek, let me go full screen here so you can see this. According to Newsweek, more than 17% of Texans don't have health insurance, and that is twice the national average. One million children. This is, you know, you can't get an abortion in Texas, but one million children in Texas have zero, <clears throat> zero health insurance. These are poor children, so when they get sick, their parents must go out of pocket so they can see a doctor. Well, how likely are they to take their child to a doctor if they have to go out of pocket? This is the pro-life fetuses are precious state. Most importantly, though, while Texas Governor Greg Abbott calls mental illness the leading cause of gun violence, Texas ranks dead last in providing mental health treatment to its citizens. Dead last. In Texas, you can get a gun you just can't get a shrink to discuss why you think you need a gun. Plenty of guns in Texas. And, you know, there's an epidemic of mass shootings in Texas. And uh, there's also an epidemic of Texans firing their weapons. Talk to people who live in rural or suburban parts of Texas. Forget the gun deaths for a second. That's a serious problem. I'm not trivializing that, but put that, put a pin in it for a second. If you live in rural or suburban Texas and you want peace and quiet, good luck. Chances are one of your idiot neighbors is doing target practice. That's if you're lucky. If you're lucky, it's target practice. 
More likely, he's drunk and firing his weapon randomly into the air to let off some steam. If you call 911 to report your neighbor firing his weapon, the police take hours to respond in Texas because it's probably a police officer firing his weapon for shits and giggles. And God forbid you're poor. God forbid you live in a poor segment of town in Texas. The police will not respond until bodies are piling up. If you live in Texas, guns are going off all the time. And you have no idea whether someone's being shot at on purpose or by accident. Ambient noise in Texas is the incessant sound of gunfire. Now imagine the toll that takes on your emotional well-being. Imagine what hearing the din of gunshots does to veterans, to anyone suffering from PTSD. One never gets used to the sound of gunfire off in the distance. So where do Texans find peace and quiet? Where are the guarantees that my neighbor's bullets don't land on my property or children? There are none in Texas. To get peace and quiet, to be free from the constant pop, 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 you need to own land, and a lot of it. You need to be away from people. And that requires money. The rich in Texas are immune to all of this. I can assure you the gun manufacturers, Wayne LaPierre, who heads the NRA, they don't hear the weapons they force on us. Gunfire, the sound of gunfire, the fear of gunfire is not a problem for the rich. And in America, if it's not a problem for the rich, it's not a problem. Texas Senator Ted Cruz says every mass shooting, every mass shooting is the result of mental health issues, unresolved mental health issues. Ted Cruz says that because he takes more money from gun lobbyists than any other lawmaker in Washington. He is telling us not to demonize the gun manufacturers. Ted Cruz instead tells us, demonize the mentally ill. Demonize the mentally ill so he can help his sugar daddies sell more assault weapons. I don't need to remind my listeners that this year Ted Cruz has had a deal with a genuine mental illness crisis in his own family. Even Ted Cruz deserves his privacy, so I'll leave it at that. I wish his family much healing. But considering what Ted Cruz as a father is going through right now, he should be the last person in America stigmatizing mental illness by making it synonymous with gun violence. Gun violence is not a symptom of untreated mental illness. It is a symptom of easy access to guns, period. In fact, those of us suffering from mental illness are more likely to be the victims rather than the perpetrators of gun violence. According to a recent article in the Journal of American Medicine, Americans suffering from SMI, that would be severe mental illness, SMI, Americans suffering from severe mental illness are 11 times more likely to be the victims of violent crime than the general population, with nearly a quarter of Americans who suffer from severe mental illness reporting that they have been physically assaulted. Now, why is that? Because the severely mental, mentally ill here in America have trouble finding work, they've been stigmatized, they have trouble finding housing, and way too many end up living on the streets or in communities where they are more vulnerable to violent assault. 
What Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, pretends not to understand is that severe mental illness is chronic and can't really be cured. It must be treated over a lifetime, and that requires easy access to medicine and talk therapy. But in America, mental health treatment is for profit, especially in Greg Abbott's Texas, which means mental health treatment is unavailable to those who can't afford it, which is practically everybody. For those with what is considered good health insurance, here in America, even with good health insurance, it is next to impossible finding a psychologist or a psychiatrist in your network. Most mental health professionals reject the insanity of our health insurance system. They refuse to wait for health insurance companies to reimburse them. That's why most mental health patients go out of pocket with the hope of one day having their insurance company get around to paying them back. That's how it works here in America. Mental health is like dental. Only the truly privileged are entitled to a cleaning. The severely mentally ill, they have nobody to talk to. But every television show, every politician says, if you or someone you know is struggling with an eating disorder or suicidal thoughts, call the number on the screen. Have you ever called the number on the screen? Hey, I have a gambling problem, so I called the number on the screen. Can you please send a psychologist over to my home immediately? Oh, you can't? You don't have psychologists who make house calls? Well, can you make an appointment for me at a nearby clinic that treats gambling addiction? And oh, by the way, make sure it doesn't cost me anything because I have a gambling problem. I have no money. See, every time I read about a Hollywood celebrity opening up for us about their struggle with mental illness, I think, go F yourself. It always ends after they open up and share and garner sympathy and love. It always ends with their saying, we must end the stigma of mental illness. Go get help. Go F yourself. There is no place to get help. What these celebrities should be saying is Medicare for all. That includes free dental and mental. Free dental and mental. I like that. Free dental and mental. That would, that would mean putting health insurance companies and for-profit mental health treatment centers and rehab centers out of business. Do you have any idea how much Mitt Romney, Senator Mitt Romney and his Bain Capital make? Do you know how much money he makes from for-profit drug treatment centers? Of course, People like Mitt Romney want to remove the stigma associated with mental illness. That way, you'll mortgage your home to pay one of his bogus rehab centers for treatment that doesn't work. Mental health care in America should be free. It has to be free. But that's still not going to solve the gun problem. There mutually exclusive. Gun, gun deaths and mental illness, not related. Mental illness, despite what Governor Greg Abbott and, and, and Ted Cruz and the NRA and the gun manufacturers want you to believe, mental illness has nothing to do with gun violence. Gun violence is not a symptom of mental illness, gun violence is a symptom of 400 million guns spread throughout our community and counting. Gun violence is a symptom of greed. Gun manufacturers need to grow their profits by finding new markets. So they need to scare us into believing we can't trust 
our fellow Americans. The trick, the NRA, and people like Ted Cruz and Greg Abbott are all trying to play on the American people. The trick that they're trying to play on us is that we need to be protected from those suffering from mental illness as opposed to protecting the severely mentally ill. They want us to fear the severely mentally ill because that is cheaper than helping them. Plus, there's the added benefit of lining the pockets of gun manufacturers by convincing people to buy more weapons to protect themselves from the severely mentally ill. It is a win-win for everyone who is evil incarnate, like Ted Cruz and Greg Abbott. Headline, there is no connection between gun violence and mental illness. Real mental illness, real mental illness is like cancer or heart disease. Mental illness is life-threatening, and it has as much to do with gun violence as multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's disease does or do. According to a report in the Center for American Progress, when mental health experts examine mass shooters, they rarely find any history of mental illness before or after they fire their weapons. There are indications that might mimic clinical mental illness, but most mass shooters do not fall under the category of quote unquote, severely mentally ill. It would be nice if the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, understood what mental illness means. He clearly does not. And the NRA and the Republicans are literally banking, they are banking on most Americans and most members of our press not to understand what severe mental illness is. He doesn't know, Greg Abbott doesn't know what severe mental illness means and he doesn't care. And as I mentioned earlier, the Texas governor can't wait to blame the severely mentally ill for these mass shootings. He can't wait to blame the severely mentally ill, but he does nothing to help them. Instead, with Texas dead last in providing mental health care, he redirects funding away from mental health clinics towards sending more troops to the Texas border this week to protect us from his imaginary enemy of migrant families seeking asylum coming into our country and destroying it. These are paranoid delusions, paranoid delusions causing Greg Abbott to see imaginary caravans of invading migrants who he thinks are gonna destroy this country. He is clearly suffering from an actual mental illness that needs treatment. Greg Abbott has no intention of helping people who suffer from mental illness nor does the National Rifle Association. Instead, they know what they're doing. They're scapegoating the severely mentally ill. Instead of helping the severely mentally ill, they give Americans one more group of people to be afraid of. Indeed, another reason to purchase more assault weapons. Because in the end, that is what this is all about, selling more and more weapons, making Americans so distrustful of each other, so distrustful of each other, we pour billions back into the gun industry to protect ourselves from imaginary enemies when the gun that we purchase is more likely to be used on ourselves. 
in order to sell more guns to Americans, Americans are told to be afraid of black people, of Mexicans. We're told to be afraid of terrorists. But those same terrorists we're supposed to be terrified of, who Homeland Security puts on a no-fly list, they are still allowed to purchase weapons. Yes, in America, potential terrorists who have been identified, red flagged, if you will. They are not allowed to board a plane, but they are free to purchase as many weapons as they want because we're supposed to be terrified of our neighbors. That's how it works here. We're supposed to be terrified of our neighbors. A black teenager knocking on the wrong door, a white girl in her early 20s driving up the wrong driveway, be afraid of everyone, especially now the severely mentally ill. Greg Abbott, Ted Cruz, the NRA couldn't give a rat's ass about the mentally ill. They just need scapegoats. They need a one size fits all straitjacket to tighten around the subject of gun violence. Without any understanding of how the mind works, they now blame the severely mentally ill. They blame, essentially, the handicapped. They have no idea what severe mental illness is or how it manifests itself. There is no connection between severe mental illness and gun violence. Guess what? People snap. And snapping is not severe mental illness. It's the human condition. We all yell. Some of us slap while others throw punches. Some of us break dishes. And some of us, if there's access to guns, go on shooting sprees. People snap. They snap in traffic, at work. We scream on the phone at customer service representatives or at our daughter's Little League umpire. We are ejected from restaurants for making scenes. We break up with girlfriends and boyfriends and end up alienated from relatives and go years without talking to people we love. That is what it means to be human. We say things we don't mean and things we do mean, and we are mean, all of us. That is what it means to be human. Some of us are meaner than others, but we are human beings. We are deeply flawed and we hurt people. We fish, we hunt, we eat animals that were once babies. We are all sinners. We hurt each other and ourselves, which is why guns are a horrible idea. All of us each day experience at least one of those things I just mentioned, which is why guns are a horrible idea. We all hate. We all wish bad on other people. We all want to destroy. It builds up and we all let it out. It has to come out somehow. It comes out either in music, comedy, art, letters to the editor, eating disorders, cutting ourselves, yelling, slapping, punching, breaking dishes, smashing computers, throwing television screens out the window. And if there's ready access to an assault weapon, shooting up a mall. That's why guns are a bad idea. It's not mental illness that causes people to shoot up a mall. It's the human condition we all snap. We all smash things. We all smash people. Figurative, figuratively, metaphorically, emotionally, that's why guns are a bad idea. We smash relationships, things, people. We scream at the top of our lungs or put our fists through a wall. We hate, we get jealous, we are consumed by resentment. 
So we exercise, watch football or mixed martial arts, eat bad food, believe Joe Rogan, kick a child, vote Republican, talk to a friend, or if you're lucky, a mental health expert. We cry, we weep, we shake, we refuse to get out of bed in the morning. And if there's ready access to an assault rifle, some of us use it on ourselves or a loved one. That's not mental illness. That's the human condition. It's why guns are a bad idea. We snap. We all snap. That's reacting to pressures, economic and personal, which get more and more intense each day here in America as we get lonelier and more isolated because of the guns. Guns are a horrible idea. Some people shouldn't have cake in the fridge because they're going to end up eating it all. Some people shouldn't have a gun in the house because they're going to end up using it. Believe it or not, snapping doesn't mean you're mentally ill. It means you snapped like a rubber band. And rubber bands snap quickly and they go right back into place. Snapping means it was a momentary eruption and that is not mental illness. That's snapping. We all snap, which is why guns are a horrible idea. Humans snap, which is why every civilized society except America makes certain that guns are not around. Humans get drunk. They get careless. They are young. They don't calculate risk. They are impetuous and foolhardy. They act before thinking. They love. They get their hearts broken. They make mistakes. They have lapses of judgment, which is why every civilized country in the world, except America, keeps guns out of the hands of ordinary citizens. Other countries allow humans to be human. Other countries allow their citizens to be passionate, to, be, to have feelings, to emote. But here in America, partially because of guns, we are slowly and methodically dehumanized, forbidden from showing the slightest trace of anger in the workplace or at school for fear that we will become identified as potentially the next active shooter. Everyone in America, because of guns, walks around like a zombie for fear they will be identified as severely mentally ill and therefore a physical threat to our coworkers. We are forced to watch what we say, not because of the woke mob canceling us, we are forced to watch what we say because red flag laws will identify us. These red flag laws are not designed to help people in emotional distress. They are designed to isolate them, to label them, to stigmatize them as non-persons and keep from them what they need more than anything else human interaction. There is an epidemic of loneliness in America. So the last thing this country needs is easy access to assault weapons or guns. 99.9999999% of us can keep it relatively under control. But there are some men they're mostly white, and in their early 20s, they can't. And so they grab an assault weapon and kill. That doesn't mean they're mentally ill. 
you need to understand what mental illness is. It has nothing to do with mental illness. Human beings snap. Two months ago, because I'm still a human being, I threw a dish against the wall after being kept on hold 40 minutes by my effing internet company. Now, am I severely mentally ill because the company, am I severely mentally ill because the company that's ripping me off with lousy internet service is also wasting 40 minutes of my life by keeping me on hold to talk to someone who won't be able to solve my internet problem? I broke a dish. I smashed a dish. I snapped. Am I mentally ill because I felt powerless, cheated, ripped off? Am I mentally ill because there's nobody in this country who will help me deal with my internet company? Am I mentally ill for breaking a dish because of that? Because I snapped? Am I mentally ill? It's not mental illness. That's being human. But in Texas, in Governor Greg Abbott's world, in the NRA's world, in a world where everybody who wants to smash a dish against the wall can instead go out and purchase an assault weapon, I could be red flagged, considered violent. And you would say my violence is a mental illness as opposed to a rational response to the indignities foisted upon us by corporate America. A nation overflowing with guns can't afford to allow people to be people. Republicans mislabel anger and rage as a mental illness. <laughs> this from the party built entirely on anger, rage, and of course, untreated mental illness. Republicans in Texas have no idea what mental illness is or means. It has nothing to do with gun violence. People snap, that's not mental illness. Sometimes snapping, like throwing a dish against the wall when you're on hold for 45 minutes, is a rational response. There was a dish and there was a wall and I brought the two together. And it felt good, by the way. It felt good to hear the dish break against the wall. That's why guns are a bad idea. Now, I'm not interested in weapons, not because I'm afraid I would ever use one. That's out of the question. Uh, I just find guns a form of cowardice. If there's going to be a fight, I'm using my brain and my mouth. And if the fight is going to turn violent, I'm using my feet to run away as fast as I possibly can because the other guy might have a gun. Guns are for the sluggish dullards whose mind and body are too flabby to turn a phrase or toss a punch. As I mentioned earlier, Alison Jordan wrote for the Center in American Progress a report revealing that mental illness is not a major factor in mass shootings. Alison Jordan is a research associate for gun violence prevention at American Progress. And back in September of last year, over at the Center for American Progress, she completely debunked the myth that mental illness, not guns, this is the myth that mental illness is behind our country's unrivaled number of shooting deaths. She says, 20% of Americans have been diagnosed with some kind of mental illness, a number that reflects the average in all other industrial nations. So Americans are no more mentally ill than any other country. And yet, no other industrialized nation has this astronomical number of gun deaths. It's not 
mental illness, it's the guns. Personally, as someone who struggles with mental illness, I find it offensive to blame the gun deaths on the mentally ill. It stigmatizes, doing this stigmatizes conditions like depression, OCD, as well as bipolar and anxiety disorders. By blaming the severely mentally ill, it makes Americans suspicious and terrified of people who are suffering. It moves the mentally ill once again into the shadows by demonizing their emotional distress. You don't help the mentally ill by tarnishing them as threats to our society. It makes people less likely to seek treatment for fear of being red flagged. Look, we know it's settled law that guns make us less safe. We already know that when you own a gun, it's more likely to be used on you. It's settled law. So Republicans and the NRA and the gun manufacturers have made gun ownership all about freedom. Freedom from an overly intrusive government. That's the new thing. Freedom from a police state. That's how they're selling guns. A check on an overly intrusive government. But guns are not about freedom. Guns, we see this. Guns make us less free from our government. Guns force our police to fire first and ask questions later. Guns have turned our government into a surveillance state looking to red flag you. Guns give Big Brother permission to monitor our every move to make certain we're not gonna shoot someone. The government spies on us and because of all the guns, we want it to. We spy on each other. We report our coworkers and our neighbors. We red flag those we don't trust. And of course, the mentally ill. Guns make us less free. They make the government more intrusive. It turns the police into a police state. I'm gonna keep telling you this. Mental illness has nothing to do with gun violence. Study after study shows that. In her report for the Center for American Progress, uh, Jordan writes that only 8% of mass shooters ever displayed symptoms of a psych psychosis. She says studies indicate that at best, at best, 20% of shooters could be categorized as suffering from some sort of clinical mental illness. In other words, you are more likely not to be suffering from a diagnosable mental illness before deciding to go on a gun rampage. Mental illness has nothing to do with mass shootings. As I said, there are other contributing factors like a temporary rage and more importantly, easy access to guns. People snap, that's not mental illness. The pressures of society, economic despair, souring personal relationships, it all builds up and that's not mental illness. Some of these men turn these experiences into violent urges and they snap, and that's not mental illness, that's easy access to gun, guns. The plan is to strip all Americans of our outrage, to make us subservient to capital, to corporations, to the police, the rich. It is not artificial intelligence that is robbing us of our humanity. It is the guns, it is the guns. 
Guns do not allow us to behave like humans. I don't care what the Second Amendment says. Guns are stripping Americans of our inalienable right to remain human beings. Please like this video. That's the only way it gets spread, is if you like it. That's what I've been told. Please subscribe to this channel. Please share this video with your friends. And uh, don't fall prey to the, the propaganda from the gun manufacturers. It's a multi-billion dollar industry and they wanna sell weapons and they're demonizing the severely mentally ill and they have nothing to do with gun violence. Leave a comment, I read all comments. If you are familiar with this show, if you're a subscriber to this channel, you'll know that I read and try to respond to all your comments. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak.